Policy Committee to order. For the record, today is March 21st, 2022, and the time is 3.08. Today we have several, well, we have two bills today. The first bill is Senator Johnson's bill, Senate File 3096. Senator Johnson, welcome. Uh, they, and welcome to you, too. And uh, I just like a good vice chair, members, so I uh, <laughs> thank, uh, thank uh, Senator Dames for keeping us on track. And uh, uh, I tell him I test him every time, and if he doesn't have it started, then I feel like he's uh, failing as a vice chair. But uh, a little joke in that. So uh, anyways, uh, Senator Johnson, uh, you have an A1 amendment? Yeah, we have to move. Uh, I let's, do, I do. Senator Dames will move SF 3096. 3096 for consideration uh, to be laid over, yep. laid over for possible inclusion in the omnibus bill. Uh, and then uh, with that, uh, the chair will move the A1 amendment uh, to get the bill in the shape the author would like. Uh, Senator Johnson, why don't you just tell us briefly what the A1 amendment does. Uh, sure. It, it just uh, changes where the funding source uh, would potentially be from the state fiscal recovery uh, federal dollars to the general fund. Very good. Any questions, members, to the A1 amendment? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion prevails. Uh, Senator Johnson, uh, to, the, to the bill as amended. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And if you recall back in 2019, I was a member of this committee. And uh, we had approved uh, $5 million for the Egg Innovation Campus located up in Crookston. That investment made by Minnesota State Legislature has made a massive impact in Crookston and the soy industry. That investment has been added to uh, by groups like MSGA, MSR, and PC, Aura, and USB, Pheasants Forever, and many more. Uh, the project started out uh, professionally developed using competitive bids as, as these types of projects are. Uh, the phase one of this project was estimated to be uh, about 10 million bucks. Uh, but because of COVID and the supply chain issues that we've had, and we've all experienced this with projects within our district, uh, the escalating costs have, have uh, impacted this particular uh, project uh, significantly. Uh, so, how, or Senate File 3096 uh, simply uh, adds a little bit more money, uh, $2 million to the initial ask, um, it, so that the project can continue to move forward. So with that, Mr. Chair, I do have a testifier here who would like to be testify on the, the impact of this. Very good. Uh, thank you, Senator Johnson. Uh, Mr. Slunecka, uh, why don't you... Identify yourself for the record and uh, welcome. You may proceed. Welcome. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Tom Slonica. I am the acting CEO for the Ag Innovation Campus. I also am on staff with Minnesota Research and Promotion Council there in Mankato, Minnesota. Uh, it's really my pleasure to be able to come back to, to this group and uh, to, to tell you that we are making great progress on the project, but uh, due to no fault of our own and certainly no fault of Minnesota Senate, uh, cost escalations have, have gotten this, uh, the project to really a standstill unless we're able to secure a little more help. Um, you know, this, this project uh, was well budgeted. It was, it was well scoped out. We had professionals from, from stem to stern to make sure that our budgeting process w was accurate. But uh, of course, uh, after COVID, all of these prices escalated. And we're still being faced daily. In fact, just this morning, I was on a phone call with some contractors about a, another price increase that we're going to see uh, for our electrical work. We're trying to contract with local electricians to make the project happen, and, and these costs just continue to escalate. But it's more than, than that. It's more than just a cost escalation. What we've learned also since this time is 
the importance of this project. We're, we're getting uh, phone calls and emails from companies not just across Minnesota, but across the United States and literally across the world that are extremely interested and, and hopeful that this project will come to fruition. This project is, is the one thing that is missing. It, it is the answer to what we call the valley of death. And the valley of death is that spot whenever you're trying to bring a project from a benchtop, uh, uh, from a benchtop um, uh, exploration or investment uh, to full commercialization. So, so what happens in that space is that uh, many, many companies, a lot of them funded by uh, taxpayer dollars, checkoff dollars in various universities, can't prove that that technology is going to work on a full commercialization scale. This center is all about getting new technologies, new ideas, new concepts from that bench top to consumers and to the farm gate where they can truly make an impact for the future. Projects like uh, that we hear all about in agriculture, we're trying to do better things for the environment like cover crops. Well, cover crops are great, but how are we gonna make sure that that cover crop pays for itself? Everything that we do needs to be able to pay for itself. And uh, this facility is going to be able to help process those in their early days in order to make sure that there is real cash flow. And there isn't any place like this that exists, uh, certainly not in Minnesota, not in the United States, and really not in the world. And the one factor that makes that different, because there certainly are processing facilities elsewhere, is the fact that this is a not-for-profit organization. Now that also comes back to why uh, we don't have the flexibility that, that corporations would have to be able to handle this huge price swing that we've seen because of COVID. We need help because we're a non-for-profit. Now what does that mean and why is that important is that whenever the project is up and running in phase one, the, the crush plant will be able to generate cash. All of those dollars, and I do mean all of those dollars, will be then granted back to uh, new projects like I spoke of earlier whether it be cover crops or new types of processing technologies, new types of biofuels, new types of bioplastics, new types of crops, all of those things, those projects will be able to come to this board of directors and be able to ask for the funding that was generated from phase one, the crush plant. So this project is bigger and, and more bodacious than really anything that I've ever experienced in my career. And I've been in agriculture now, you know, close to 50 years. Um, I've been all over the country, worked for many different countries, and this companies and, and this project is the most exciting thing I've ever been able to be a part of. And we really appreciate uh, your help in being able to see us through this short-term, one-time uh, exposure that we've had uh, due to COVID uh, increased costs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, members, any questions? Senator Anderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I was just mentioned that this is a one time, uh, and I don't see that in the language. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. There is a one time. So, what's to say that we, if this $2 million goes out, uh, that you won't come back and ask for more? Mr. Slonucky. Mr. Chair, uh, Senator, um, so so in phase one, we have everything contracted now. Every the, the the dirt work has all been completed. The building is being literally poured as we speak, um, and we have bank loans to back up uh, the additional funding. So so uh, only part of the funding is coming uh, from this bill and from the prior bills. The rest is coming from private industry and. Um, and, and, and the bank loan as well. So to the best of our capabilities, so that I can say firmly that uh, for, for this phase, for phase one, uh, this will be the last time that you'll, that you'll see my smiling face asking for support. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Anderson. Uh, so uh, how much money of the five million has been spent? Uh, Mr. Slonucky. Mr. Chair, Senator, uh, all of the five million, roughly given or to give or take a few hundred thousand, has been invested already into the project. Uh, we have we are starting this month uh, into the bank loan portion of it, um, and then we'll also be tapping into the to the private uh, industry money that we've able been able to capture as well. Mr. Chair, Senator Anderson, it seems to me when we passed this legislation the last time that there was some kind of a an agreement that we would provide this money with some type of a money that was going to come from outside other than our state money coming to, the, to them. I, am I incorrect in saying that? Mr. 
Slunaki. Uh, Chairman, uh, Senator, uh, so th so that uh, that is correct, and like I said, we've we the the money is it has been spent in accordance to the agreement with the Department of Ag, um, and we are now tapping into all of those dollars. But even after all of the bank loan is, is is brought in and the private money is brought in, we'll still be two million dollars short of being able to com to complete uh, phase one of the project. So, Mr. Slonucky, um or Senator Johnson, if if uh, some or all of this wasn't able to be uh, funded, uh, what what would you what what would you do then, or what would change on the project? Uh, is there any part of it that you just would maybe not complete or not do as much of, or what what would happen? Yeah, if you could uh, share with that share that with us. Uh, Chairman, um, uh, it's uh, we will do everything that we can to spend a lot more time to try to find some uh, corporate funding uh, to fill in those gaps, but it could take it could take years uh, to be able to find that. Um, we're, we're looking for larger partners to be able to help that out, but uh, I think what's important is that we get this project up and operating as soon as possible. Uh, with everything that's going on in the world, um, yeah, I think it's more important for agriculture as a whole, as a major contributor to the state's uh, economic development, that, that we invest today to make sure that we can start building towards that future. So uh, we, we don't have no in our vocabulary, so we will find a solution one way or another, uh, but it will definitely take a lot more time in order to do that. Senator Dames has a question. Senator Dames. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And could you, could you tell me, sir, what is the total project cost? Mr. Slonucky. Uh, Chairman, Senator, um, so uh, we have uh, $13.5 million uh, budgeted for, for the cost of the project today. And so you've received five, is it, from the government or state, correct? And you're asking two more, so about seven. So do you have a, quite a few private uh, donations toward this project, or is most of the balance a bank loan? Mr. Slonucky. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Senator, yes, that we are working towards that. We've got uh, well over a million dollars committed from private, as it mm -hmm. stands today, plus the, plus the bank loan uh, that, that will really reach closer to $14 million. Uh, than 3.5 uh, because the project is 13.5 to get it completed and then of course there are operating costs in addition to that as well. Follow up Mr. Chair and Senator could Davis. you tell me what your projected completion date for the project is? Mr. Slonucky. Mr. Chair, Mr. Senator, the um, uh, projected completion date is about this time next year as long as uh, the electrical components are available. Mm -hmm. Right now we've got into there's new developments every day about simple things like starter motors and various other components that may push this thing uh, closer to fall. Thank you. Senator Nance. So Mr. Slinicki, uh, just to clarify on the dollars, 13.5 uh, uh, is with this two million would be your estimated total cost, and uh, it was about eleven point five or twelve before. Or is this two million in addition to the thirteen point five, Mr. Chairman? Uh, the thirteen point five is our is our best estimate. Again, with the cost escalating daily, but is our best estimate for the build uh, to complete the build. Uh, there'll be other operational costs that that we'll have to find other sources for uh, that will take it a little bit higher than that. And uh, you mentioned if, if this funding wasn't, you didn't receive the $2 million, it might take years to, to do the rest. So would the project just be at a standstill then, or you would use the part of the project that you finished, and then there's some other parts you may not build until, until, that, until you had the money, whether it's this or something else? Can you explain that just a little bit more as far as a timeline to Senator Dame's question, yeah. when you would estimate to have this project up? Up on online, yeah, Mr. Chairman, the the project would go into a into a uh, um, into a quiet mode. Uh, we we simply would not be able to get everything completed. Um, again, had prior to COVID, the, the the ten million would have been enough, and and today it simply isn't. So so the two million provided uh, the two million dollar support will then immediately be, be backed by an additional one point five from a bank loan. 
um, in order to get the plant up, up and operating. And then additional uh, dollars have, have been um, promised at this point uh, from industry in order for us to, to get up and operational. So yes, it w so without the support of the two million, I would, I would have to go out and find three and a half um, and that would definitely take some time. Very good. Any other questions, members? Senator Johnson, uh, final comments before we lay the bill over. Uh, thank you, Mr. Westrom, uh, Senator Westrom. Just briefly, the ask here is is two million dollars, which I know is a is a, a large sum. Uh, but if you think about the impact that this is going to have across the state, this isn't just a Northwest Minnesota thing. This is research. research. It's going to impact agriculture, farming, economics across the state. Uh, and the ROI on something like this is, is really a, a phenomenal thing and something that I'm excited about the research and the potential that's coming out of this. So, you know, it, it's unfortunate the circumstances uh, that uh, required us to come back here again uh, to look for this uh, additional funding. But Mr. Chair, we, you, you know, you took a risk early on in, in 2019 and in putting that into the bill. And, and I think this is something that we can be very, very proud of when this uh, research facility is finished. So thank you very much for, for your, your audience today. Very good. Uh, the bill is laid over for possible inclusion in the Ag Omnibus Bill. Thank you, Senator Johnson and Mr. Slonucky. Members, I will move to the next uh, the overview of the governor's uh, supplemental budget through the, with the Department of Agriculture and uh, uh, And so, um, members, uh, the, the chair will move a Senate file 4019 for uh, possible, for consideration of possible inclusion in the Ag Omnibus Bill. Uh, Commissioner Peterson, we'll start with you. Identify yourself for the record. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members, uh, Tom Peterson. Uh, Commissioner of uh, Agriculture, Minnesota Department of Agriculture. And I don't know if you want. Oh. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Andrea Vobla. I serve as Deputy Commissioner at the Minnesota Department of Ag. And, um, well, welcome, Commissioner and uh, Commis Deputy Commissioner Bobble. Mr. Chairman and uh, members, too, I just was wondering, like, we have a couple of different ways we could do this. Um, we were going to walk through. Oh, okay. There, there's a spreadsheet. Uh, we could do that, the one she's handing out right now. We could just walk through the 4019 like bill language or, um, you know, or, uh, or this spreadsheet that's in the uh, summary too. I'm not sure if you have a preference because uh, we could just go real quickly through. Uh, as a, we did present in a PowerPoint earlier in session, we can hit some of these again. So, so, so Commissioner Peterson, uh, <laughs> There, there is some policy language in the mm -hmm. bill, so wondering if it's best to just walk through the bill that direction. But okay. if, you've, if you've got an easier way uh, with your presentation, I guess we're, nope, we're a little that, amenable to, uh, to a hybrid option here, too. So, Mr. Chairman, that was, that was kind of how we originally were going to do it. I think the only questions that if members have, and you can see on the spreadsheet, which some of the programs, if they're one time or if they carry on to 24 and 25, uh, but you can refer to that, and we're glad to take any questions. So if that okay. works, I'll just jump right in. I say let's do that. Let's walk through okay. the bill. And members, uh, this the, the bill the chair has introduced uh, as a courtesy to uh, get it in front of our committee uh, on behalf of the governor's office and uh, for us to review the supplemental budget requests. And uh, what, with that, uh, Commissioner Peterson, uh, why, don't, why don't you just go ahead. Okay. Mr. Chairman and members, and thank you, Senator Westrom, for uh, introducing this bill. And uh, Appreciate the opportunity. You know, with the pandemic uh, and everything that's been going on in the world, uh, I really um, felt, and MDA did, that it was really important that we have a strong agricultural budget. We've seen other states, uh, such as Wisconsin, North Dakota, uh, Colorado, Washington State, a lot of states put in a strong agricultural budget. Some of those states use general funds. A lot of them used ARPA funds. Uh, our administration looked at our ag asked and really looked at using general fund with the surplus we had. And we really looked to this as almost like a menu of options that we could uh, see as we looked at how do we best uh, pull out of the uh, pandemic and move forward with our food system in Minnesota. 
Um, what the governor did to, or the administration did, was open a portal for Minnesotans to uh, send in ideas, and uh, we were really excited to do that proposal. So these aren't like all great ideas that myself or our staff had. These were mostly ideas that Minnesotans had that we looked through uh, and put forward. So with that, I'll just jump right in, and I'm just gonna hit the, the, the highlight. You can see the total is $59 million on the uh, 1.19. And then uh, skip, I'm going to skip just to hit the uh, different pieces and real high level that are in there. And then if there's questions, we can come back to them or however you want to work. So the first big piece is on uh, page three, line 3.23 uh, is a million dollars for uh, uh, noxious weed grants that the committee has done before. Those are incredibly uh, popular and important. And those are really strong investments for Minnesota, especially if you look at Palmer Amaranth in our state. We've been able to contain and eradicate it from many counties, uh, and that is a small investment. And I look at what other states are dealing with this, and so it's a uh, uh, something again that is very strongly supported. We see uh, here from counties. On page four is uh, line 4.15, and there'll be language on this later. Is five million dollars to start a uh, grain indemnity fund in Minnesota. The idea behind the Grain Indemnity Fund is an important discussion to have. Uh, as in Minnesota, we have seen um, uh, several bank or uh, several um, uh, 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 failures in the last couple of years, uh, and uh, so this is something that we've been looking at as a as a department. For myself as commissioner, uh, I and legislators, I think this is something we have to address because Minnesotans are are uh, not are losing dollars our state we do not protect farmers uh, to the level that other states do in my mind and uh, if this happens again and we don't do anything we don't have a discussion uh, you know I think that's going to be hard for Minnesotans uh, and farmers to continue to do you look at uh, uh, the ones that are happening right now uh, such as pipeline and uh, pipeline uh, that happened this year held a five hundred thousand dollar bond uh, but the law, uh, uh, and uh, we're going to, we have, uh, let me see here, where is that? It's like, uh, um, oh, pipeline foods, okay. They had, uh, they, we have received $5.5 million in claims for that five, uh, for that $500,000 bond from 30 sellers of grain. So that's going to be like 10 cents on the dollar. So that just wanted to highlight that piece um, on 4.19 is uh, dollars to support our uh, meat and poultry inspection program as we ramp up so, that it's important too that we so have dollars for our, yep just just quickly on that pipeline while we're there and i yeah. always i always debate if it's better to get through it all or <laughs> ask questions but i members i think on budgets it's probably if you have a question on an area feel free to let's ask but the pipeline is five and a half million the estimated total loss or I mean, I mean, is that a fair conclusion to, to, to connect that that's about how much uh, is damage is in damages out there, or do you expect it to be higher than that? Even? Mr. Mr. Chairman, that is uh, what we are looking at right now is uh, in what we have received in claims uh, for uh, what uh, farmers had held there uh, and uh, are sold through them and are, are owed. And so we are in the process of looking at those. Uh, those claims and evaluating those. We also have, uh, you know, other ones. Uh, we've had f uh, since 2016 five failures totaling 7.5 million in claims. Payouts totaled between 844,000 or 11 uh, percent. Claimants claims were received from 113 claimants across those five failures. So that's just uh, you know, a little snapshot. Okay, very good. So, Commissioner, it, it generally it's probably most of the damages because that's each person that's been harmed is asked to submit a, a form with uh, what their damages or losses were, and that's where the bond looks at the whole picture as much as they can get from, from people that have submitted that? Correct, okay. Mr. Chairman, and uh, correct. And then there's, um, there's parameters around that too, like uh, uh, what kind of documentation they had, how far... The look back is for uh, for that uh, grain, and uh, so there's other things that we look at and and um, refer to in processing that. We've closed uh, several of those uh, Ashby and kind of your area, Carlstadt up in Center Johnson's district, 
and then uh, Wadena in uh, Senator Gazelka's district, all just in the last uh, two or three years here. And now Pipeline Foods uh, in Minnesota is the biggest uh, holder of grain in that one. Very good. Thank you. You might proceed. Okay. Uh, 4.24 is the Forever Green that the uh, uh, is uh, funding for that. The committee has heard a lot about that. Uh, Senator Dames has a bill very similar. I uh, don't um, uh, spend too much time on that. We can go back to that if you want. Uh, 5.4 uh, on page 5 is uh, $10 million in the second year is appropriated to the general fund to the Commissioner of Agriculture. And this is for a uh, soil health assistant program. Mr. Chair, you looked a lot at the Ag BMP loan program last year, and so this would kind of complement a grant program that would help uh, with uh, 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 soil health equipment, very similar to Senator Weber's bill that was heard last year, and again, working with a lot of the Ag groups uh, on this uh, provision. Page six, uh, in going down to um, uh, uh, line 6.17, that section has to deal with farm safety grants. This would give us some language just to say that uh, the balance doesn't, uh, can, uh, we can carry it over. Uh, we didn't have that in the bill, so at the least we'd like to have that language. We will probably be, um, we're trying to promote those farm safety grants, but we probably will be carrying some dollars over on that. <clears throat> uh, uh, line 6.28 is another one that we received a lot of uh, uh, interest in. We've seen other states do this, is uh, $1.5 million to support uh, farmers markets. And uh, we really saw in, in COVID farmers markets really explode and people using them all across the state. And uh, so this would help them with a lot of things that they have, whether it's buying uh, sort, uh, storage sheds, signage, uh, tables, uh, other things that they could use and really help uh, boost our, our farmers' markets. Keep in mind that is, uh, you know, several hundred communities all around the state that that benefits and brings people into town uh, whatever day of the week that is. Um, uh, on page 7.6 is uh, $150,000 to implement a program of grants. It's a smaller grant program, but it's one that we've heard a lot in our travels for especially crop growers. There's some packaging uh, changes that have been made, and, and we've just heard this from... Uh, a lot of our vegetable farmers that would say this would be really helpful because of uh, changes that have been made and more in federal um, uh, regulations. So this is, uh, would address some of that. Um, I am going, there's some number changes on 8.29 that just adjust agri. Uh, so we'll skip ahead to page uh, 11. On page 11.32, you'll see a big jump there. Um, and this is for our expansion of our meat, poultry, egg, and milk processing uh, grants. And uh, this was a pretty popular grants that we have. I, I don't think we need to spend a lot of time talking about meat processing in this committee and why we would put this in there. Uh, I would say we did these grants just recently and we had a, about that in, our, uh, in what we had in requests. And again, this is uh, the meat processing piece, again, is probably our number one thing. I was just at the state bison convention uh, this week, and this is what they all talked about. How do they get more processing? I was at the, met with our cattlemen on Thursday and the Sustainable Farming Association on Friday, and number one topic, you know, as we can do it. They're very grateful for what the uh, legislature has done, but I think the more that we can continue to increase our, our grant making uh, to that is gonna be helpful. Along with that, we have uh, line 2.15 is a cost share. Uh, to expand new markets cost share, uh, and uh, that would help develop those food plans that they need uh, uh, in that business, but other businesses too, such as cottage food uh, handling uh, as well. And then paid 12.25 uh, is 1.5 um, million uh, in grants to um, assist small and medium-sized meat processing. This is kind of a new idea too in hiring uh, and new employees. So we're trying to just think of different ideas that we can have because we have had grants. We had grants too in 2020 where we had to get out to folks and people just said, I can't hire, I can't retain my, fo my workers. And so we can see, uh, not to skip ahead, but uh, um, uh, where is that right here? Okay, so, but anyways, you know, I think this is just kind of a different idea that some of the groups have had and brought to us for uh, doing hiring incentives for that. 
Uh, line 13.7 on the next page is, uh, on page 13 is uh, $1 million for grants to facilitate, modernize, or expand grocery stores, corner stores. Uh, this was a similar grant that we did uh, in 2020 as well. That was very popular in working with our grocery stores all across the state. They had a lot of cost, uh, you know, and associated with that. We did that grant and we had a lot of applications for this. And so I think there's a lot of interest and, you know, no, no doubt our grocery stores were frontline uh, in COVID and they have uh, different costs that might be helpful in doing that. Line 13.21 is another one that we see really um, uh, expanding in our state is uh, for some of our smaller farmers and companies to uh, use um, grants for co-packing and cold storage capacity where uh, commercial kitchens, Mr. Chair, I think there's some place out in your area too that is really interested in this that um, people are starting these smaller companies but they uh, aggregate uh, in one area. We're just seeing more and more of this as our local food uh, markets develop and so I think this is uh, again something very interesting. Line 13.29 is uh, more uh, dollars, increased dollars for farm business management. We saw a big surge in that with, um, with COVID and people getting into that. We're seeing a lot of our newer farmers use farm business management and uh, very successfully. And so tremendous interest in that too as we uh, uh, go through um, uh, coming out of COVID. Uh, line 14.5 uh, is, uh, uh, this is another idea that came to us uh, for planning grants for local governments, regional planning, economic development organizations, and tribal governments for planning uh, value-added food and agricultural economic development. So think of your like region fives, region uh, seven, nine, um, some of our uh, initiatives that we have all across the state that are really looking at their food system and really developing what they want, want that to look like. And again, this is a really something that's happening and we think there's a tremendous interest in working on grants uh, to help with that. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead to um, uh, let's see, page 22. Okay, um, is uh, uh, two million dollars uh, on page 22.12 is to provide culturally appropriate services for emerging farmers and food system related businesses. Uh, during COVID, uh, and it's exciting to see as some of our work with our Emerging Farmers Program, we're just seeing a tremendous interest in uh, 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 folks from uh, entering farming uh, all over. I see it in my own area. We see uh, a lot of people getting into farming, uh, but uh, helping them with their uh, providing some assistance would be, uh, would be helpful. And uh, we, we have done or worked with some of this or some ideas and I think this is an exciting piece uh, that we can work on uh, moving forward. Um, do you want to talk about the IT one and then sure. do a yeah. couple and then I'll take over? Yeah, you want me to do that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to take over for a second. So the next uh, line in 20. Wobble. Oh, yes. Uh, 22.17 is for IT modernization, so that's $2 million the second year is to support IT modernization efforts. So when I originally talked about the budget, one of the things we talked about was um, COVID laid bare at a number of issues, but one of them being um, that we needed to just sort of bring a lot of our services online and be able to have those accessible to farmers uh, all over the state. Um, our hope is to lay the groundwork eventually for a larger project to be able to have a sort of a one-stop shop uh, through our website for people who have multiple certifications or licenses with the agency so it's much easier to, to interact and, and access all of our services. Uh, the next one we have is on 22.24 is $1.5 million the second year for so, Ag Emergency so Account. Oh, Ms. Vobble, um, maybe you could remind us, uh, I know we put some money in uh, to new IT last budget. How much did we put in then, if you recall? And um, yeah, I mean, give us the picture, maybe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think what you're referring to is maybe the the money for our hemp program. Um, I think it was maybe fifty thousand. I'd have to double check, um, but that was for a, a, a specific hemp licensing system, and this would be integrated with the whole IT modernization we do as an for an agency as a whole. Thank you. 
So 22.24, 1.5 million for our ag emergency account. Um, this is uh, uh, something we've been talking about in the committee, but obviously HPAI is likely here and we just haven't found it yet, but um, it is, is knocking at our door. So we wanna make sure that we have enough funds in the ag emergency account for, for response as well as preparedness, uh, in addition to African swine fever, which we're also anticipating to come our way. 22.31 is $3 million the second year to help with uh, hunger relief. This is for a second harvest. That does have um, $1 million uh, ongoing after the, the initial $3 million. Sure. And then on uh, um, 23.15 is uh, $2 million to the uh, Board of Trustees for the state colleges and universities to support uh, you know, uh, uh, processing technical education uh, at Central Lakes College in Ridgewater. So they've started the classes. Now they kind of need some of the infrastructure and uh, things and talking to some of the instructors there, this would be very helpful. I would note that uh, um, Congressman Stauber and Senator Smith and Klobuchar just uh, did secure $2 million. So we should, you know, I think look at that to see for that uh, processing. But I think that um, they're very excited about uh, the classes they're gonna offer and there's tremendous interest, but they need the tools and equipment now that are not necessarily cheap. So we've given them that uh, help in starting the classes, but that's a, a piece that I think is very interesting. So, Commissioner, uh, on the two million, and maybe you don't know yet, but what 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 would that all be used for, and would that be targeted towards those you know, those uh, colleges? Uh, in and, the fed uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman, in the federal dollars or in this one? Yeah, the ones yeah. you were just mentioning. Yeah, about yeah, the, I haven't looked in it. It just got announced on Friday afternoon. Okay. And uh, but I'm guessing it is for um, uh, equipment and uh, and, and uh, you know pieces like that too and stuff. So okay, uh, we'll have to dig into that more because that's that is exciting. So uh, as well. And, and and I guess while we're on it, the the, the one of the bills we heard earlier last week uh, about meat meat processing equipment for high school grants, if any of that dollar, those dollars might be uh, able to be used towards that type of an effort, or do you know if they're targeted? And I realize you don't know if, if, you, if you do find out, if you could yeah, Mr. get back Chairman, to us, that'd be too, great. I think it's higher education, but um, it says uh, education in the Central Lakes area, so we'll have to look and see um, you know how that goes to and everything. But I, I do think that's an exciting bill, too, that because uh, we just, you know, anything we can do to build that pipeline, you know, whether it's in high school or college, too, and everything. So we, we'll look at that and see if we can get some information on that. Uh, line 23.27 is a million dollars uh, uh, for a grant to the Good Acre, which is just uh, over here in the St. Paul uh, area, to work with um, uh, for their local emergency uh, uh, farmer fund. It's kind of a interesting idea where we're uh, compensating emerging farmers who are working and helping building emergency farmers uh, and then they donate the, do the food to hunger relief organizations. They worked on this program, it was somewhat successful um, and we'd like to expand it some and everything. So I think there's uh, interesting uh, pieces in that that uh, could jumpstart a lot of farmers and also uh, as another way to get a hunger relief with some fresh fruit and vegetables. Uh, and then, do you want to take over sure. on the, I think yeah. skip broadband. We'll skip the broadband. I don't know if you want to comment on the Bowser. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the, um, we'll go into Article 3. This is, in, this is a, a Bowser um, Board of Water and Soil Resources uh, Soil Health Cost Share Program. It um, complements nicely to the other soil health program that uh, we, have an, we are asking for an appropriation for, similar to what uh, Senator Weber brought to the committee. So we'll, we can go into that a little bit more, but um, the, the this Article 3 is for the, the Bowser Soil Health Program. Um, and then we'll go into Article 4. Oh, yeah. Um, so um, on 26.6, we add the cooperative grants. This allows us to create a, a basically a grant program similar to what we used to have a, a while back um, that allows us to do grants to cooperatives. Uh, if you go to 27.16, um, under that section, that's where we start our Ag BMP loan program. We have some slight technical updates. Um, you'll see on 28.1 through 28.3, um, we uh, struck that. We don't think it's, any, it's no longer needed. The staff that we have identify specific funding sources. It streamlines the, the business process so that it makes the local units of government have to verify the available funding. 
uh, 28.20 to 28.21. Um, we struck that. Um, we uh, Our program only allows funding requests for the total of the Ag BMP portion of the loan, so that, that language isn't needed. Um, 29.23, we take out that language as it's redundant. Uh, we um, use the same language again, or the same amount in the, the language below. And then on um, 30.12, this allows for surface water intake projects to be able to be eligible for Ag BMP loan program. So it's, they're, they're pretty technical changes until you get to the, um, the addition of an eligibility requirement for those types of projects. Um, next is on, um, under our uh, section 17.118, we make some updates to our livestock investment grants that we, uh, have been around quite a long time. So you'll see that um, we reduce the, um, the cap for the maximum qualifying expenditures. And then we also remove the lifetime cap of $50,000. Um, and then on the next page, 31.6, we remove um, the wait list. Um, I'm sorry, this is the, the 50,000 and then the um, 31.13 is where we um, remove the wait list. 31.19 is the, our Soil Health Financial Assistance Program that we've created that I referred to that complements well with the Bowser Program under Article 3. Um, this is, again, very similar to uh, Senator Weber's bill. It's a new program um, where we would provide financial assistance to a number of different entities related to uh, soil health. 32.6. Um, this is, in this section, we um, make some changes to the Oriented Strand Board program, which is new. Um, there was no administrative funding, so we added that in line 33.4. Um, and then we had it align better with uh, an existing program we have that we implement called the Bioincentive Program to make it into quarterly payments. Uh, as, as I understand it, there's no money in this Oriented Strand Board program, incentive program as of right now, but if money were to become, to be, to be put into that program, we wanted to be able to have it uh, um, in, a, in a shape that we could implement. On uh, line 33.15, um, we make a slight update. We re referred to this in um, our, our original presentation related to the drought package, but this is for our rural finance authority. Um, this is to allow, to decrease the percentage of average annual gross income from farming, um, and then decreases it from three years to one. Uh, um, and section 33 point, I'm sorry, line 33.21. Um, this is, this goes hand in hand with the, the, um, the program that I'll talk about next, which is our grain indemnity fund. So it eliminates um, the 180 days of the breach of contract requirement. And then on page, uh, or on line 34.11, um, we change it from, any grain buyer's bond to may not be covered completely by the grain indemnity account. So again, like I said, it, it works hand in hand with a grain indemnity account, which is um, the bulk of the, re the remaining amount of this bill. Um, so essentially what this does is it's a one-time $5 million appropriation to establish the account. Um, the maximum value of the account is set at $15 million with a minimum set at $9 million when the fund would blink off. We'd be collecting it on grain sales to Minnesota license holders. Uh, there are, is an opt-out clause for all producers of grain, so they, um, can, op they can opt out of, of doing that, and we can offer a rebate for that. Um, the payouts would be on cash sales and grain storage. Those are covered 100%. This limits payouts for voluntary extension of credit contracts, which um, we, we became very familiar with in the, the last few failures, um, and zero, zero coverage if the, if the contract is over three years old. Um, we... Uh, Essentially, for the most part, bonds are taken out of the process. However, we do require new entities in their first three years of operation that they must have a bond, and the commissioner has the ability to um, ask for additional bonds based on financial reporting from other entities. Um, the, uh, it also allows the MDA to seek re repayment of the fund through bankruptcy in the event of fraud or negligence through penalty to members of the board or management. Um, this is one that we, uh, we modeled after a number of other states. I, think, I believe there's 14 other states, many of them around us, um, and suggestions from other regulatory programs around the country. Um, we are going to have a, a grain advisory group meeting um, later this week to talk about this a little bit more, but we thought this was a, a really great place to start as it, um, it gets at a lot of the, the core issues and root issues that we're experiencing when we've uh, encountered a number of these failures. And with that, Mr. Chair, I believe that is the end of our bill. Oh, yes, and you probably want to hear about the supplemental as well. But I can I'm going to cover that now.
Yes, uh, the, the amended supplemental. Yes, sorry, we've been uh, calling it the it's supplemental to the supplemental, uh, supplemental 2.0. Um, so we have three additional items that the governor uh, asked for in this revised budget. Um, so we're asking for an additional um, 22,000 a year um, into the um, rural mental health specialists. So um, it would be 44,000 for the biennium. That is to cover um, a slight pay increase for our two rural mental health specialists. Currently, you'll know them as Ted Matthews and Monica McConkie. Um, and also some um, allows for a 6.5% admin for um, the new um, appropriation recipient we're asking for, which is Region 5 Development Commission. So um, it currently goes to the um, Minnesota State Universities, um, but we're asking to switch it to a different entity and then ask for admin and a slight bump. Senator Dames has a question. Oh, yes. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair Senator and Dames. Commissioner Vobble. Uh The dollars you're talking about are for the two mental health professionals. I believe one works up in the northern part of the state, the other in the southern part of the state. Are both of them now connected with the Department of Ag or just one of them? Ms. Barbell? Thank you, Mr. Chair, Senator Dames. Um, for right now, one of them, we uh, historically what's happened is we work closely with them for, for obvious reasons because of their work. Um, right now, um, historically, the, the appropriation has been a pass through the Department of Ag to the um, Central Lakes College and uh, South Central. Um, as of right now, due to um, a, a, an, ish, an administrative issue with the, the feds, we had to switch over uh, Mr. Matthews over to the Department of Ag as an employee for a, a short period of time. Our hope is to get him um, back onto a, a, um, a contract basis with, through Region 5 Development Commission. Follow up, Mr. Chair. Senator Dames. And so why was that particular to one individual in this case versus both individuals? As I understand, they're both working as independent contractors, and then pretty soon one of them could not. And Ms. I Bobble. don't need you to get into a lot of details, but uh, why was one able to and the other one not? I mean, there's something, something wrong here. Ms. Vobble. Thank you, Mr. Chair uh, um, and Senator Dames. Excellent question. It is, as you referred to, it's, it's quite complicated, so I'd be happy to, to um, walk you through a, the, the long and sorted story. But um, one of the reasons there was one and not the other um, was because the, um, the Internal Revenue Service um, found uh, some discrepancies that uh, they wanted to, to see remedied. Um, so what we're trying to do here is um, make sure that this doesn't happen with, with the other individual as well. So we want to make sure that they're um, both taken care of and, and doing what we need to be doing um, to make sure that this doesn't happen down the line for either of them. We can talk about it too offline. Thank you. Yep. Senator Frentz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Ms. Bobble. We talked a little bit about this, and I know you um, worked hard to get it clarified. If you don't mind saying a little more about South Central's role, which, of course, is in my district, they had um, this administrative request, or I don't even know what you call it when you and I talked. Um, I'd love to go back and tell them that we talked about it a little bit in committee. And to Senator Dames's question, um, what was it? Of, South Central is the extension of Minnesota State in North Mankato. Do you mind saying just a tiny bit more? And I think what I'm asking is, okay, we're going to fix this, right? And when I go back and talk to Dr. Parker and she says, what do you got going? I'm going to say, what? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Bobble. Thank you, Mr. Chair and, and Senator Friends. Yes, so you are correct. Um, we have uh, the two appropriations. So um, one went through South Central College, one went through Central Lakes. Um, we worked very closely with the wonderful Keith Olander and Brad Schlesser. Um, and so what we determined, um, it was somewhat short notice. We found out about this IRS situation. It was over the holidays. Um, and so we were very hesitant to um, cut off Mr. Matthews services during a, a really tough time. So um, we worked very closely with SEC um, to uh, move his services over to the department, at least for uh, a, a time being. And we've been working closely with them. Um, and they helped us uh, have the conversation with Region 5 as well to ensure that um, they were very open to having this appropriation come to them. And we feel it's a very good fit. So they've been very helpful in that way. Mr. Chair. Senator Fritz. Just want to say, Deputy Commissioner, I'm going to tell Mr. Schlesser that you said he was wonderful, and that'll make this all seem a lot easier to swallow. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Very good. Go ahead, uh, Ms. Vobble. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. And I should just add too as well, um, we did put in the language that uh, you'll see when we get the amendment together, um, it, we do ask the pass-through grant go to Region 5 Development Commission, but we say specifically in collaboration with Farm Business Management. We thought it was very important, and, and Mr. Olander brought this point up as well, um, that it was very important that we maintain that close-knit relationship with the Farm Business Management instructors, and, and we agree. Um, the ad other additional supplemental 2.0 addition we have is um, some dollars for beginning farmer tax credit administration. I think I believe this has come up in committee as well. With um, we've had a large volume of uh, interest in both the beginning farmer tax credit as well as an additional volume in our rural finance authority loans, um, and we just have a stellar staff who uh, have way too many uh, loans and, and tax credits on their plate. So we're trying to get them a little bit of help. Um, so this, we're asking for some additional dollars, uh, 141,000 the second year, fiscal year 23, uh, and additional funding, and then um, $56,000 $56, ongoing. There currently is a sunset for um, the, the beginning farmer tax credit, although I believe folks are looking to extend that, in which case we would ask for that money to, to continue on past the, the sunset date. And then finally, we're asking for uh, $1.5 million in fiscal year 23 for the Ag Innovation Campus, which you all just heard about. Um, the Governor Walls has been, was there for the groundbreaking. He sees the uh, absolute uh, essential need um, for, for this investment up in the Northwest, and so uh, he felt it was very important to include this in his revised budget. Did I miss anything? Ms. Vobble, uh, on the farmer tax credit, can you explain that just a little bit more for us? Uh, the need for the extra supplemental budget, and, and if you could go into that a little bit more, I think that'd be helpful. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll maybe take a crack at that too. Um, when the beginning farmer tax credit was put in, uh, there was no admin put in with that at all. And so if you look at our Rural Finance Authority and you look at the volume in uh, loans that we've handled even in the last five or six years, it hasn't quite doubled, but almost with the same amount of staff we had then. Uh, so just our loan volume, which is great. We want people using our loans. Mm -hmm. That's tremendous. Really excited about people using the Rural Finance Authority. But then that staff, too, also was charged with doing the beginning farmer tax credit. So you added 1,100 ta uh, transactions on top of already busy loan staff. Um, that they're doing 500 asset owners 500 uh, people roughly um, you know I remember when we passed the beginning farmer tax credit and we thought we'd have 400 people a year using it well that's been pretty close actually we but it's asset owners and then the people that are getting the asset that do the credit so you have 1100 transactions last year and it's a scramble you know we've had to try to find a little bit of money they've had to try to find a little money uh, I think we just recently hired like a retired employee to come on part time that we're kind of stretching out, but we got to take some pressure off of that because it's a, they're both great programs, but it's, uh, you know, and I think you'll see that with, uh, you know, uh, support from Farm Credit and the Bankers Association who use that, who want to get those loans uh, put forward. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a priority for us to try to, you know, uh, alleviate some pressure from our staff, but also serve Minnesotans in a timely manner. Thank you for that. Uh, go ahead. Is there That's a little it. more to finish? Okay. So, um, members' questions. While you're thinking of your hard questions, members, um, there's of note uh, the another part of the budget, and I realize it's not part of the Department of Ag, but members, 170 million. Uh, is also in there for uh, supplemental or one-time uh, rural broadband dollars. Uh, any any comment on that, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Peterson or Deputy Vobble? I'm not putting you on the spot. I realize well, it's not your department. But. Well, Mr. Chairman, as somebody who has uh, five different ways to connect to the Internet at my farm, uh, I'm all for it. So uh, I just think that it just reflects across the rural areas and the changing farm economy how much people depend on uh, on that and I, I struggle with it personally as many of you know that have been in meetings with me and uh, This week we just got the new Elon Musk uh, Starlink thing uh, uh, At our place and hopefully that's maybe a little better, but it's just uh, you know I know firsthand and and we see uh, I know it's a priority for the administration and uh, you know, I appreciate whatever you can do to continue to move that forward because we hear it all the time like even our IT modernization asks that we have in our budget is to serve Minnesotans better to put more of the forms online That's a top priority for us is to you know serve and match up with what Minnesotans want right now 
But we also look at that where some counties, you know, just do not have access to credible internet, you know, to and everything. Uh, I can tell you firsthand going to, you know, you hear the story about going to McDonald's or the school library to upload your kids' homework. I've done that. And, uh, you know, um, uh, so uh, whatever we can do. But important, I would just say it from agriculture. I think all of you know the technology is changing so fast, whether it's your uh, tractors, equipment, soil maps, uh, everything that you can use, your rain. Uh, you know, the, uh, it's exciting to see companies in Minnesota that have, uh, like Earth Scout, that have the sensors that are right out in your field that send everything right to your phone. Uh, now, so you can see the soil temperature, how much uh, uh, moisture you have. Uh, very exciting stuff, but, you know, so I appreciate you working on that, too, as well. Very good. Senator Dames. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And to go back to Senate File 4019 that you went through, if I compare that to the governor's revised recs, uh, the, the sheet that, was, that we received, shows uh, that that was done on 321, which would have been today. So I take it the, the uh, spreadsheet here is more update than what the bill is. Would that be fair? Commissioner Peterson. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Dames, are you looking at uh, this spreadsheet doesn't reflect those changes? Uh, uh, this one is dated... Uh, 321 of yeah, 2022 both, okay. at 928 a.m. Yeah, um, it must not be, those must not be in the, oh no, they are. Let's see, hang on. Yeah, that's right there. And I understand it's different than the bill. Which is the, which is the one that's the most accurate? The spreadsheet. Mr. Spreadsheet. Mr. Chair. Deputy Vobble. Or who said? Oh, online. Yeah, oh, somebody yeah. online. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, Hannah Grinwald. Oh, Hannah. Okay. Very good. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Hannah. Mr. Chair and members, the spreadsheet that was provided to you um, reflects the, the governor's supplemental budget release last week. So the items that um, the agency was discussing show up on page one, lines 27 through 29. Um, and columns B and C show the uh, revised budget in full, and then the columns D and E reflect the Senate file 4019 in front of you. Hope, hope that helps. Senator Dames, is that helpful? Well, yeah, I just, it, it, I'm just making sure that the spreadsheet that I'm looking at is the most current, and that's what would be more accurate than what the bill is, and that's what that appears to be. Very good. My real question is, as we get to the cannabis part of it, I'm, I'm surprised that we got uh, quite a bit of cannabis stuff in here, and I'm trying to find out, it looks like the total cost to implement the cannabis is about $86 million. correct me if I'm wrong, and the total income on that is expected to be about $64 million. And I, have, I guess I have, uh, I just want to know if, my, if I'm looking at that correct or not. Commissioner Peterson, what line is it, Gary? It would or, or be Senator the Dames? line one ten, eighty six one fifty three in the bottom. Okay, or Hannah, um, can we start with you? Uh, if you sure. If, if you uh, want to explain that a little bit, and then uh, we can go to the commissioner. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, the spreadsheet uh, reflects the um, entire governor's supplemental budget, which includes all of the items for the legalizing adult use cannabis item. Um, the Senate decided to track this in the agriculture budget. So that's why all of the items underneath legislating adult use cannabis show up on columns B and C. Um, I'd have to check to see the total amount of all of those appropriations for just the legislating adult use cannabis. Uh, but for, for uh, non-tax revenue, there is 1.9 million um, for legalizing adult use cannabis. And then for sales tax, uh, there's 63.9 million in the, in the tails. But I'll try to figure out the total of, of 
the item all combined. Yeah, if you could do that, Hannah, I sure would appreciate it. So we would have a total of the estimated cost of this as well as the estimated income. Mm -hmm. Thank and, you. And, and Senator Dames, to, to, to the point, and uh, Commissioner, uh, the, the supplemental budget do, doesn't have any uh, supplemental money for cannabis, but we're carrying it on our spreadsheet. Um, any any comments on that, or or any corrections, or or just just to make sure we're looking at this properly. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, so uh, Hannah's correct that I, I, I believe the decision was made for, for AG to carry the, the dollars for now. Um, the, there's going to be a separate language bill that sort of covers all of this um, that is, is not with the, the governor's supplemental AG budget for right now. Well, Mr. Chair, follow up. Senator Dames. So which bill will, which bill will the policy part of it, which bill is that going to be in? If it's not going to be in the egg bill, but we're going to carry it in the spreadsheet, where what bill is it going to be put in? Deputy Bobble. Mr. Chair, uh, Senator James, it's a, a separate bill that I, I don't believe has been introduced yet. I, I'd have to look into that. Strictly for cannabis? Correct. Okay. Thank you. And, and uh, Commissioner, Deputy Commissioner Bobble, uh, these are areas that fall under the Department of Ag or, or Commissioner Peterson, whichever one of you wants to, the, the bill coming would be something that is per, pertains to the Department of Ag or is it another, another agency? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, they, so um, it's, it's quite broad in how many agencies it touches. Um, the core of it is it would, it would develop something called the Office of, of Cannabis Management. Um, which would be a basically a separate ed agency on its own. Um, so there's not really a good place to put it quite yet. We'll follow up, Mr. Chair. Senator Dames. So when this decision is made, will the tracking sheet, the spreadsheet, then track that bill and be taken out of AG? Mr. Chair. Deputy Vaughn. Um, uh, Senator Dames, I will double check on that. I'm not quite sure what the what the long term plan is or. or how it was decided amongst the, the Senate and House and administration about how where that was going to be carried, but I can certainly let you know. I just get con I, I just get concerned that this is going to be very confusing to the general public if we are carrying the dollars in the, in, in the egg spreadsheet, and then the policy, and that's going to be in a separate bill, and this is going to be unrelated to it. Thank you. So. Um, Senator Dames, th thank you for uh, your questions, and uh, it's an area we'll need to uh, just get a little more clarification on. Uh, uh, and am I correct, uh, Deputy Vobble? Uh, there, there is some of these areas that you that touch Ag Department now, or Commissioner, um, and, and that's where the Ag Department is is tied into some of the some of the issues relating to industrial hemp or hemp and. Cannabis. Uh, you want to touch on that at all? Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're you're exactly right. So uh, there's a number of agencies that touch a, a little bit of cannabis. There's the Office of Medical Cannabis within the Department of Health. Um, we also have the Board of Pharmacy that covers um, some parts of, of cannabis. Um, we have the Industrial Hemp Program, um, and we also have regulatory authority over certain um, food items as well. So there's um, that's what's lending to some of this confusion and and sort of the need for for an office to have a, a centralized location for all things cannabis. In, in, in Deputy Vobble, uh, not to try to go down the rabbit hole too far here, but if that office didn't, 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 does not come to fruition, uh, how much of this would be in Department of Ag, or would that be likely the place most of it gets handled now? Mr. Chair, um, so I think if, if we don't get the office, we'll have to continue as is, where um, the Department of Health is covering the um, Office of Medical Cannabis separately from our work with industrial hemp and then the Board of Pharmacy over um, uh, medications or, or medicine. Um, so as, as I've said, it's, it's somewhat messy right now because there's not a clear line of, of jurisdiction um, and, or, or expertise. So um, if the office did not come into existence, we would have to continue on the way, the way we're going. Very good. Um, so, so last question on that. 
would, would, would you foresee the industrial hemp part getting merged under the Office of Cannabis under this hypothetical situation at this point? Mr. Chair, uh, I think um, we're open to a lo lot of ways to, of how this could look. I think there's a lot of opportunities for industrial hemp um, as, as its own potential crop separate from some of the other opportunities for, for cannabis. Um, but we're, we're open to a lot of different opportunities there. Senator Murphy has a question. Senator Murphy. I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Um, and I, I really appreciate the detailed presentation on this proposal and the questions from the committee members are important. Um, but Mr. Chair, I'm wondering if you could share with us a little bit of a roadmap uh, from, about where we're going to go. Do you, do you anticipate that there's going to be an egg omnibus budget bill coming out of this committee? Will we be putting that together? Um, Senator Murphy, uh, it's not 100% certain yet, but I do anticipate some sort of ag omnibus bill, uh, likely. Uh, and, and while we're on it, I was going to announce this at the end, but um, we're getting pretty close to the end. Uh, the plan would be to mark this up either next Monday or Wednesday. So we wanted to get it heard so people had time to uh, digest it, uh, find out more answers to questions if there is, uh, prepare any changes if there is uh, proposals, and then um, stay tuned, but it'll, it'll be next Monday or Wednesday that we plan to mark, mark up uh, any sort of omnibus bill that, that would have all or some or none of this in it. <laughs> so does that help? It does, Mr. Chair, and just uh, one more follow-up. I appreciate your patience. Um, I'd, I'd, you know, hearing different things rambling through the hallways of this now open building, which is great. It's great that we're together. Uh, and one issue that I'd heard that had come up was that there wasn't a plan to give um, the finance committee's targets. Um, and so if there's going to be an egg omnibus budget bill, I would expect that this committee would get a target. Is that your understanding as well? Uh, Senator Murphy, I, I think that would, that would eventually come if... Uh, if we get that uh, to, to move forward with the bill. So um, I, I don't have 100% clarity on that yet, but uh, I, might, I might as the days go on this week. So, Senator Friends. I just want to say thanks, Mr. Chair, for letting us ask about the timing of it. It's important for our caucus to go back and say, here's kind of what they're thinking, here's the timing of it, and I appreciate your candor. And I wrote down every word you said. Including the part about not 100%, which I put in my little notes here, practically 100%. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and uh, you're, you're welcome, Senator French. Um, I suppose I could have pulled your chain a little and said it's going to be tomorrow, but uh, I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> but I understand what you're saying. And hopefully that's helpful for everybody uh, as deadlines come. Um, we all know. That gets to be a rush, but uh, we're trying to give as much time to digest and, and have this in front of us. So that's why we wanted to do it today. A few more bills on Wednesday and then uh, lots of time to get more questions answered. So. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Other I'm questions, members? My chain. Thank you. Other questions? Uh, Commissioner, one area I, or I, think it, I think it was you that covered, but uh, there's 250000 for... Um, New license uh, transition, uh, if you can explain that a little bit more, but uh, the second part of my question on that is, it, it seems like we're also hearing that you're short of money on uh, inspectors for grocery stores and talking about going to uh, county inspectors in some areas, uh, which um, some, some grocers have uh, raised concerns about. Um, do we need a transitional license? Person when we can't afford to keep the current inspectors in place. Uh, if, if you can just comment on that, if they're related at all or not, uh, just, just touch on that a, a little if you could, please. Um, Mr. Chairman and um, uh, members, uh, yep, on line 12.15 is the $250,000. And this, uh, our new markets cost share program is really 
is just that, that helps uh, people that have a new product that want to come online. We saw this would be very popular during uh, COVID with uh, new companies uh, that were um, maybe trying something different. We saw a lot of farmers transition to having their own websites. I'd also say that our new markets cost share uh, program was uh, extremely, one of the things that I thought was very uh, helpful. We're, you know, we see the cottage food uh, uh, piece there too as well. Uh, so maybe that might be getting to a little bit about what you're talking with our retail uh, food handlers. To me, that's a bigger issue that we'd like to try to handle by, you know, trying to dedicate those fees that uh, that the entities pay in would give us some stability into our uh, into our program that would help address some of the issues that you're talking about. And so they are somewhat connected, um, but just looking at the overall stability of that uh, language is probably a bigger and longer conversation, but something we've been trying to address for a while. And so um, I don't know if the deputy has anything to add on that, but she's been working on that too as well. Yeah, um, Mr. Deputy Chair. Um, no, excellent question. I think um, part of the piece with the new markets or the, the cost share program we talked about with the, the 250000 in the budget um, is to try and get at some of the, the the folks who are seeking food licensing um, or who are trying to... Um, like I said, you know, go from a, a different type of license. Um, so this is really a grant program for, for them um, to assist those businesses who are trying to do that. As, as Commissioner Peterson said, um, the, the food retail licensing issue has been a, a long-term issue that we're seeking a, a, a longer-term sustainable uh, fix for, one of those being um, the dedication of fees. So um, they're sort of two separate um, but somewhat, somewhat related issues. So, uh, Commissioner, one more area. We talked about the uh, strand board uh, language for 6.5% administrative fee. They're, the money uh, isn't allocated yet, uh, although I think there's some statutory dedication. Um, can you tell us, uh, refresh us on how much of that, that allocation would be? If I'm remembering right, it was about $15 million dollars. Um, in, in the strand board when it gets up and running, uh, doing the math, 6.5% of that would be uh, about $900,000 uh, just, for, just for passing through the money to, uh, to the entity uh, receiving it. Seems like a lot of money, but um, can, can you touch on that a little bit, uh, what we'd be looking at? Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, so th I, I, there's a couple questions there. I'll, I'll um, take what I can. And then uh, we also do have our um, our Director of Finance and Budget who could probably get that number for you for the, the Oriented Strand Board. I can't quite remember off the top of my head how much was allocated, and I think 24, 25. Um, so the 6.5%, a key piece is it's up to 6.5%. Um, and we wanted to make sure it was in the, a, a similar um, similar shape as it is to the bio-incentive program, so that when, when the money does kick in, that it's it's uh, ready to implement right away. Um, so six, there's a lot of programs we have um, that we might not use up to the 6.5%, but um, we want to just uh, have it in line with other programs where we have at the department. And Sherry, I don't know if, if she has that number. Sherry, are you on line? Hello. Sherry Kramschurter, the Finance and Budget Director for the Department of Agriculture. Okay, go ahead. Um, the fiscal year 25 appropriation would be 1.5 million, and then the fiscal year 20, uh, looks like then from fiscal year 26 through fiscal year 34, um, as some sufficient to make payments required by the section not to exceed 3 million would be the appropriations. What? And then six I, and a half. I didn't hear the last part. 2 million, did you say, Sherry? 3 million. 3 million, okay. Beginning tw fiscal year 26. And then 1.5 million in fiscal year 25. Very good, thank you. Members, other questions? Very good, uh, Commissioner Peterson, uh, Deputy Commissioner Vobel, uh, thank you for uh, your walkthrough and uh, joining us today. Uh, at this point, uh, that covers our agenda, members, and uh, no further questions. Uh, this meeting is adjourned.